And welcome back to Let's Play SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Last time we defeated Robo Patrick and unlocked the final section of the Bikini Bottom hub area with our next set of levels available to us, the Kelp Forest, the Dutchman's Graveyard, and SpongeBob's Dream. We'll be going through the levels in the order they appear on the level selects list, starting with Kelp Forest. This is the level I've been looking forward to covering in this game the least, because I, I don't care for this level too much. It doesn't start off too bad, but uh, there are a couple of sections towards the end of it that are, uh, well, well, we'll get to them. Let's enter the kelp forest. Here we are in the kelp forest, an interesting area with many sights to see, for those that don't get hopelessly lost first. So, that little cutscene demonstrating the new enemy and uh, whoa, I, uh, I actually did not know that was there. Uh, I was just kind of walking forward mindlessly and got uh, whacked by the local flora. Not exactly a great way to start this uh, level. Now, heading over here, we've got actually our first little hidden thing of the level. Hopefully I don't screw this up. You have to hit these shtikis in a single bubble bowl, and if you do, a sock appears for you. Very nice. In fact, there's a couple of socks right at the start of this level, so we can get right down to business with uh, getting the collectibles for this level. Uh, this one has seven socks for us to get, so we will need to take a trip out of it in order to turn in our socks to Patrick after a point, but we shouldn't have to do that right now. Heading over here... Whoa, hey, leave me alone. Got some more shatikis. Uh, what we want to do is uh, wait for them to return to their normal size and sneak up on them. You can... Oh, whoops. Accidentally went a little too hard on the analog stick there. You can jump in the air as long as you are still in your sneaking momentum. The shatikis will not uh, react to your jumping. And we got to uh, make our way up against these thunder tikis. Get up here. We want to jump over here to these bouncing brown leaves. And make our way up and around to another sock. Hey, is that Mrs. Puff over there? Let's go say hi to her. I'm sure she wants to see us more than anything. Hi, Mrs. Puff. Driving class isn't out here today, is it? Uh, no, SpongeBob. Wh why do you say that? Do you think we'd have class out here just to hide from you? <laughs> How silly. I'm just, uh, gathering twigs for the winter. Yes, that's it. Oh, can I help? I have a merit badge in twig gathering. Actually, you can help with something else. These robots showed up and scared all the students, I mean, uh, campers, off into the forest. Uh, before the ranger arrives, someone needs to go out and find them. I'll help you find them, Mrs. Puff. I'm the sponge for the job. Thanks, SpongeBob. I'll make sure to give you a nice reward when you've found all of them. Let me guess, the reward is a golden spatula? But yes, that is our collectible for this level. We have campers to find, so let's go for it. If you uh, go into this port ahead here though, little Easter egg. Yes, you can have SpongeBob go drop a deuce real quick, if you so desire. There is no reason to do that, it's just a silly thing you can do. Isn't that grand when games have that? Anyways, this new enemy, as you can see, the lower section uh, spits out fire. The top one will begin to explode. Uh, the middle one doesn't do anything, it's just if you don't kill it, eventually the uh, rest of them respawn, so you have to take out all the different pieces. Here we've got another Arf, and he is up on a ledge, so we can't actually bubble bowl him. I suppose I could uh, use a uh, cruise bubble on him, but we can also blow up those Thunder Tikis, deal a little bit of damage to him, wait for him to come back down, hit him here, and we have cleared him out of the way. Now, the first Golden Spatula of the level is actually just right by the first uh, toll booth leading into the next section of the level. Out in the open, nothing special required to get it, but there is a handful of other things we want to take care of before we get to it on the screen. You probably noticed there's a bus stop over there, that does mean, yes, we do have some things to do with Patrick in this level. After a uh, rather brief showing in the Murmur Lair, Patrick actually gets quite a bit to do in this level, for better or for worse, depending on your perspective. Let's jump on this brown leaf over here, get launched up over here, and you probably noticed that uh, the camera 
revealed a camper to us when we brought up those leaves. So there we go. We've got the first camper. Three of the campers available in the level are actually available on this very first screen. So we do not have to work too, too hard to get them all. Let's see here. I just want to hit this guy with a bubble bull if I could actually aim it. Sometimes the uh, bowling icon doesn't exactly appear, so it can be a little hard to aim your bubble bulls. Let's get Patrick in because we have to use him to start using the Patrick teeter-totters to get throughout the level. This, uh level has quite a few timed uh, puzzles revolving around the usage of the throw fruit. So uh, get used to uh, moving quickly while you have throw fruit in your possession. As well as uh, unique properties such as Patrick cannot jump while holding the throw fruit, but he can still use bounce pads. So bounce over there, get in position, create a bounce pad over there so he can get that throw fruit that is closer to the teeter-totter, which will allow him to actually use it before the one that he's carrying uh, explodes, so let's do that. You probably noticed in the distance that there is a Freezy Fruit down there. We'll be saving that for later, for later. Definitely nice that we tag that checkpoint there on the off chance that we fa we fall. Very real possibility for someone as clumsy as me. You actually do have some pretty tight platforming to deal with here, so you gotta be careful. Let's see, throw the Fur Fruit over there. Quickly make our way here and just make it. Yes! Oof! Just barely. Uh, it exploded just as it managed to hit there. We found another camper. We'll bounce our way back on over here and head on down this way. Now we can go use that Freezy Fruit. Get this guy out of the way. And go get... Oh, wait. That's uh, not exactly where I have to jump. We have to jump from over here. I apologize. There is the golden spatula I mentioned earlier. Right out in the open. Nothing special required to get it. Let's uh, throw the Fur Fruit down here and make our way over here. But that is not all that there is left to do on the screen. We have one more camper to find. Uh, despite the rather wide expanse of water that you're able to freeze with that throw fruit, I'm sorry, goo, uh, there is actually nothing else to uh, find there. On the goo, I mean. So you just have to get that sock and then you are done. Now let's do some platforming across the various leaves here once again. Uh, wait. Ah, I'm, uh... I'm forgetting what I'm supposed to be doing here. Hold on. <laughs> Whoop. This is a new one for me. I got a little bit ahead of myself. There is a bit of platforming we have to do by the first Patrick Teeter-Totter. Hitting the switch right here will allow us to cause these plants to sprout up, creating additional platforms for us. As you probably noticed, the uh, green leaves are solid platforms we can jump on, but they eventually wilt as we jump on them or land on them, and we need to uh, make our way across quickly or else we will be dropped in the drink below. This is not really that much of a threat as there's not really any reason to idle on them. Them. All of the leaves tend to be pretty close together, and they don't ask you to do any particularly tricky jumps with them. Anyway, extending those that vine there to get the vine a, or the uh, leaves a little bit higher will allow us to reach this button right here. Once again, we can extend the vines, make them go a little bit higher, get the uh, bounce leaves up so that we can get the camper right there. And I am just going to let myself get dropped in the drink and thrown back to the last checkpoint that we activated, which was by Mrs. Puff. Not the closest to the end of this first area, but close enough. Oh, come on. Yeah, for some reason, those little guys, like, it's just, uh, like, their hitboxes are... I don't know, it's just like, with the attacks in this game, I can just barely not reach them, and they're able to hit me with their, uh rather generous wind-up on their swings. Anyways, let's just jump around here, get the golden spatula. I do want to be Patrick going into the next area because he is required for the throwing puzzle that is uh, needed to solve. Uh, or rather, the throwing puzzle you need to solve to progress into the rest of the level. So, may as well just stay as him for the time being. Heading over here, you can actually uh, sequence break a little bit by using this leaf right here. You can bounce around this corner and get farther into the level than you're supposed to be able to reach at this point. We're going to do it the intended way to start out. Hi, Mr. Krabs. What are you doing here? Ahoy, Patrick! I'm trying to return three stone tikis to this pedestal so I can get to the kelp cave across that bridge. There could be customers in there! I saw three tikis scattered around this area, but me old brain couldn't figure out how to get them back up here. Can I try? Sure, why not? I need a good laugh. There's a golden spatula up there for you if you succeed. 
Oh boy, Mr. Krabs. I'll see what I can do. You said the magic words, Mr. Krabs. Golden spatula. Anyways, we've got these three stone tiki platforms, and we've got to find the three stone tikis throughout this area to throw onto each platform to sink them into the ground, creating a path up to the golden spatula there. Uh, if you happen to uh, lose track of the tikis or throw them into a place you can't reach them, you can hit these switches right by them to respawn them. Also note that the uh, stone tikis respawn if you happen to fall into water, so uh, be mindful of that. I keep saying water. I should be saying goo, of course. It is goo. It is not water. We, The entire world around us is water, and this is simply goo. Now, I will warn you right now, uh, you will, if you happen to, uh, or what was I saying? <laughs> uh, if you, right, right, what I was saying before I got distracted by my own terrible jokes is that uh, if you fall into the goo, the tiki's do reset. There is a very real possibility that I will fall in and have to redo some of the tiki throws, but fortunately this level opens up a lot of shortcuts that allow you to get the uh, stone tiki's a lot faster. Like, we already got this uh, box opened up right here. Uh, one thing to note is that if you have Pactra try to grab something when nothing grabbable is by him, he will occasionally do these little bashful animations, which is more annoying than anything. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> That's exactly what I was talking about. Now that one's a little tricky to reach, but it's not a big deal. Uh, whoop. Just trying to get this thing out of the way. And, uh, you know what, forget this sleepy time there. We don't need to actually drop down there. Alright, let's try that again. <laughs> Fortunately, the first stone tiki is right by the platform. Oh my goodness. As I was saying, the first stone tiki is right by the platform, so if we do happen to fall and lose access to that, it is not the end of the world. So if I can get this correctly this time, it's a little bit tricky. Oh my goodness. If I can get around it, ugh, man, I am doing terrible here. Leave me alone. These things are just lining up to try and annoy me in this video. I already dislike this level. Please don't make this worse on me than it has to be. Get out of here. I reward thee with death. Not much of a reward, but uh, it is an eternal one at least. Eh? Eh? Alright, making our way back down here. As you can see, there is a freezy fruit over there. What does this switch do? Does this do anything? Oh wait, I, I know what this does. <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, hitting this switch opens up this cage on the other end of the goo. As you can see, uh, I'm a little bit distracted today, so uh, my commentary hasn't been quite on point. Lots of stuttering, lots of stumbling, lots of losing my train of thought, and above all, lots of errors. It's the kind of thing you come to see, right? Right? I'm going to reassure myself by saying that's the kind of thing that you come to see. With that said and done, we can grab the golden spatula with little difficulty. You just have to walk across and be quick about it. You make it with about five seconds to spare, and we freeze the goo. It is nice that the uh, time for the cage to be open is much more generous than the freezy fruit timer, so you have little ch chance of uh, activating the cage and then uh, failing to get it before the uh, goo, or uh, you, have, you have little chance that the cage is going to close. Oh my god. Uh, one thing you can do with uh, Arf says Patrick is if you stun them, the belly bump will instant kill them. Anyways, as I was saying, if you hit the switch, the timer is longer than the Freezy Fruit, so you don't have to worry about the cage uh, closing before the Freezy Fruit runs out. There is a camper. There is one more in this area we need to find. The last one is found in the area succeeding this one. All right, we've got a... Oh, well... <laughs> I am just all over the place this more not morning, it's it's afternoon. Can you tell that I'm, I'm out of it? Boy, maybe I should have taken a nap before I recorded this video. Whatever. Because I fell there, that means I am going to have to re-throw uh, the stone tikis once again, but I was expecting to have to do that. I'm just trying to be mindful of my surroundings here because there are socks to collect as well as campers and golden spatulas. Gotta be mindful of all the collectibles in this game. That was a stylish belly flop right there, Patrick. Now there's a sleepy time over there, so Patrick has to rely on throwing items in order to take him out, but they're of no consequence otherwise. Here is the last camper for this section of the Kelp Forest, so we're almost done with that collection quest right there. Let's feed some clams to this shiny object and open up the path through the rest of the level. One thing to note here uh, is that... Uh, this uh, bungee hook that comes in does not actually lead to anything, so you don't have to go on that bungee hook in order to uh, get a uh, sock, spatula, whatever uh, kind of collectible you usually have to get. Alright, heading over here. We actually have some very tight platforming coming up, so be prepared. It can be pretty easy to fall here. Alright. 
Just barely make that. Got an Arf here. Uh, let's, uh, okay, that's good. Oh, well, that's actually undesirable. Maybe I shouldn't have thrown that, because I could have just stunned him with the belly flop. Like so. Get this guy taken care of, and give him a quick bump. I could hear that guy, but I couldn't see that guy. I'm impressed that I was able to dodge him. Not exactly an impressive feat uh, in general. I'm just impressed with myself, given how I've been playing the rest of this video. We're heading over this way in order to grab a sock, because there is one at the end of the path for us. Okay. Okay. And grab that sock, and conveniently there is a bounce leaf. Oh, whoa, 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 no, oof. <laughs> conveniently there is a bounce leaf that will take us back, but it doesn't bounce you uh, <laughs> like a bullet, like other uh, returning bounce leafs do, or bounce pads, so uh, you actually do have to do some proper platforming to make use of that one. We're not going to come back with SpongeBob, because like I said, that bungee hook actually leads to nothing. A whole lot of nada. Let's destroy this Duplicatatron, and now let's uh, go to work uh, putting the stone tiki's down. Get this guy taken care of so I don't have to worry about him. Get out of here. Alright, take the box and collect the stone tiki over here, and be very careful not to fall, so I want to make sure I line this up properly. Get to the edge of the leaf as best I can, and that should- no! Ah, curses. Okay, finally made it. I don't know why I usually why I'm having so much trouble with that one today. I don't usually have issues getting that stone tiki there. Finally got it though. Uh, oh man, these stupid coffee bots are messing with the aiming. Get out of here. Let me throw the stone tiki on here, and finally we've got all of the stone tiki platforms pressed down. This opens up some bounce leaves for us to get into the next section of the level. However, we are not quite finished here. Get this guy taken care of. These guys are so annoying. What do you got to say about that, Mr. Krabs? Well done, son. Next time I need to round up customers for the Krusty Krab, I'll give you a call. Why would the customers want to be made round? <sighs> You're a strange one. You are, Patrick. Strange is one way to put it, Mr. Krabs. Strange is definitely one way. Anyway, heading over this way, now we are going to take out that, or go on that little, uh, path that I mentioned earlier. And coming this way, let's hit this switch over here. Oh, well, that would explain why I was having trouble with that platforming section. <laughs> okay, so uh, I actually have not gone this way in a while, so I completely forgot about that. Whatever, it doesn't really matter too much to me. Let's uh, get this guy taken care of and get our sock. Now, let's travel back. No need to uh, continue along this path here. Heading up here, and let's make our way... Uh, actually, can I even make it back this way? Eh, whatever. We've already lowered the platform, so it doesn't matter if we fall into the goo at this point. Oh, come on! <laughs> okay, uh, how about this way? Yeah, sometimes the most pragmatic solution is just the correct one. I just uh, teleported back here. <laughs> Alright, let's grab the golden spatula. I'm not even on the part of this level that I dislike. <laughs> I don't know why I'm having such a rough time doing this today. Clearly, I have entered this with the wrong mindset. Anyways, heading into the next section of the level. Get this guy out of here just because he annoys me. Now we are in the Kelp Caves, and I hate this section of the level, so get ready. Hello there, Barnacle Boy! Uh, <laughs> uh, hi. Um, I need, uh, SpongeBob's help if you see him. Okie dokie! Conveniently, there is another bus stop right in the Kelp Caves, where I'm sure that gets a lot of traffic here. Let's return to Barnacle Boy as SpongeBob. Hey kid, I could really use your help if you had some time to spare. Sure, Barnacle Boy, what do you need? I'm trying to recover my lost energy crystals and power my new secret superhero power. It seems the robots have found my supply and have hidden them in this cave. Secret superhero power? Oh, what to do, what to do, what to do? If I told you, it wouldn't be a secret, would it? Just trust me, it's worth finding these crystals. I'd go search it myself, but my bunions are acting up today. Well, then you rest those super bones of yours. I'll get searching for these crystals. All right, so we've got another select, uh, another uh, selection of collectibles to grab. We've got the energy crystals that Barnacle Boy needs to power his new superpower. 
And uh, because the game only seems to have coding for one uh, level specific collectible at a time, instead you just get these kind of awkward messages that pop up when you grab the power crystals. Not sure why they decide to uh, do that for the power crystals instead of the, and not the campers. But whatever. I guess the campers is what they implemented first. And now we get into what I consider to be the worst uh, idea for a golden spatula in the game. For this section of the level, we need to regularly switch between Spongebob and Patrick, because Patrick needs to pick up these stone tiki's and throw them onto the stone tiki platforms in order to get these vines to extend upwards so Spongebob can get to uh, parts of the level he's not able to access on his own. And you may have noticed, this game doesn't do on-the-spot character switching, so every time we need to switch between Spongebob and Patrick, we need to return to the bus stop and... Uh, switch between them there, then walk back to the section of the level that the character who uh, needs to progress it was not able to get through before. And it's about as annoying as it sounds. Uh, I do not know what they were thinking. I feel like anybody who would have played this in testing would have thought it was awful, so I'm just going to assume this mission wasn't tested that hard. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it, it, this was not a good idea. <laughs> Whatever. I, I've been having a pretty good time with with the game up to this point, so I guess I can live with there being only one whack mission uh, so far. There have definitely been tough uh, objectives up to this point, but uh, this is the first one where I feel like this is just tedious, busy work. And at this stage, any time where I have to go back to the bus station to switch between characters, I'll just cut it out because you really don't want to see this. As a matter of fact, uh, I gotta, we, real quick, uh, we've got to return to Patrick real quick. I uh, almost forgot we got uh, ten socks here. So, real quick, we will stop playing as Patrick, return to Spongebob, be right in front of Patrick, talk to Patrick to turn into his turn in his socks. Wow, Spongebob, you found some! Now they're back home, safe where they belong. Here's your golden back scratcher. Spatula. I don't speak Italian. All right, we have only got 10 more socks in the game to grab, so I don't have to worry about that glitch anymore. Anyway, now that that's taken care of, let's return to the kelp caves. Picking up where we left off as Patrick, we find another stone tiki table. Let's just uh, get that little coffee bot taken care of. We got a sleepy time over there. Can I uh, throw the stone tiki at him? As a matter of fact, I can. There we go. That's how Patrick solves problems that involve stealth. Let's throw this stone tiki over here. Now, you will actually want to uh, carry the stone tiki from earlier in the level forward to solve certain puzzles, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. Now we have to switch to SpongeBob. Alright, returning to this section as Spongebob, I would just like to take this opportunity to draw attention to something that I really haven't uh, actually mentioned up to this point. You might have noticed that the uh, visuals in Kelp Forest are pretty dark, dingy, and they all kind of bleed together. And I, I will be honest, this level, uh, especially uh, now that I'm older, uh, this level is definitely hard on the eyes. I, ow! That is not what I wanted to do. Whatever. <laughs> it's, a, it's a minor inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> what, we, what we needed to do is hit the switch. Fortunately, that uh, stone tiki that I destroyed was uh, not the one from the beginning of the level, so uh, we can just bring that back with a uh, quick stomp. Now we need to switch to Patrick. Alright, coming through this section as Patrick, as you can see, I've got the stone tiki from the beginning of the level, and I'm coming uh, into here uh, with uh, two stone tikis close by. You want to carry in both the tikis because they are required for... Uh, a couple of uh, stone tiki tables that you need to throw tikis onto. We're gonna get this tiki table set up, and then we're going to go back and grab the other stone tiki that I grabbed so that we can take it to a different section of the level. We'll want to go off to that little path to the right there, so let's just grab this guy and start making our way over here. Now, there is a very, very, very tight puzzle that you're supposed to do uh, with a throw fruit, but we can actually cheese it by making use of the stone tikis instead, and I'll be showing how. Okay, get this over here. Let's just destroy this coffee bot so it doesn't annoy me while I'm trying to throw the stone tikis onto here. Get this stone tiki up. Oh, that was not what I intended to do. Patrick, you cannot uh, use the cruise bubble. You're not going to be able to accomplish anything with that. Let's get this stone tiki tossed down here. And here is another sock. I believe that's the second to last one for the level. Yep. And here we have activated the box. So now we have a convenient warp point that is uh, closer to or uh, is close to the stop or the bus stop. 
that allows us to get back up to this elevated section of the level, which is nice and convenient for getting SpongeBob up here so that he can jump on these bounce leaves. Uh, SpongeBob doesn't really have to do this specifically, but, uh, you know, we're coming this way as him anyway, and that lets us get another energy, energy crystal. There are two left. Let's uh, get this purple shiny object here and then make our way down to this uh, steel platform, stand on that, and get the caged switch open. Ah, boy, that was a terrible shot. Let's try going around this way. And that should do it. Yes, there we go. Getting that section of the level opened up, we now need to switch back to Patrick. Thankfully, this uh, this time the bus stop is right by where we were, so we will just bring Patrick in, no problem, get him up back up here with the box, and we do want to grab our stone tiki now, so let's just grab that real quick, and let's make our way over here. And I want to drop this stone tiki right down, actually no, no, uh, we want to take this up a little bit. This area can actually be pretty annoying if you happen to die and the robots start respawning. Also, one thing to note is that there is a monsoon patrolling around the area. Patrick is not particularly good at dealing with the monsoon since he needs to have an item to throw at them. And this guy is consistently uh, out of your range, so uh, just do your best to deal with him. Alright, heading over this way, we have a Patrick teeter-totter here, but what we actually want to do is throw this stone tiki over to that platform over there. Best spot to do this is to just get to the edge of the teeter-totter, face forward, and throw it. If you can just barely see it, past that energy crystal, there is another stone tiki table. Now, what the game intends for you to do is to go grab a throw fruit from the previous section of the level, where uh, we got the that central area with the first uh, table we came across, uh, I'm explaining this really poor, poorly, but uh, there's a throw fruit by the previous stone tiki table. But what we should actually do is take this stone tiki and use it to get us across on the teeter-totter. Also, here's the last camper. Uh, the throw fruit, it is just far away enough from the teeter-totter that uh, it is like it is like a frame-perfect uh, amount of time you have in order to get that throw fruit to that teeter-totter. And I've only been edged to do it once. It is so much easier to just do it with the stone tiki, so we're, that's what we're going to do. The stupid monsoon is creating a uh, visual... I can't see what I'm doing. Stop creating clouds, man. Okay, okay. We're making it. We're making it. All right, here we are. It's very unfortunate if you fall into the uh, goo at this point. That is the last... Uh, Energy oh no, it's not the last energy crystal. I got ahead of myself and thought I had already collected it. Throwing the stone tiki table here creates a path to the actual last energy crystal, and also the last time we need to switch between SpongeBob and Patrick. Alright, coming to this section of the level as SpongeBob, we just need to bounce on these leaves here. It would be absolutely awful if you fell into the goo at this point and had to do a bunch of this over again. Get the energy crystal here, and we've got one more leaf to bounce on, so let's make our way back over here, bounce up on this, and we've got another steel plate to stand on. This opens up the final cage with a cruise bubble switch for us to hit, so let's get that going out there. Ooh, that was a terrible angle. Let me... Let me try and uh, line this up a bit better so I can turn this a uh, bit better. There we go. And we just need to make our way to the switch over here that I can barely see in the darkness. Uh, I also am using an HDMI upscaler to record these videos, uh, and it really does not like the look of... Uh, the kelp forest. We're going to grab the spatula here, and we're actually going to uh, just go into the next area and then teleport back to Bar Barnacle Boy with the taxi in order to grab the golden spatula from him. So let's go to Kelp Vines, the final section of the level. And this is probably the most infamous part of the level for uh, people who've played this game. Hi, Mermaid Man. What are you doing here? Oh, hello, Kyle. I was trying to find some of our missing energy crystals when I came across this vine. In my younger days, I held the all-time speed record for vine sliding. You should try it. What a hoot. And if you can beat my best time, I'll give you another of these gold spatulas. Well, I am a bit busy with all these robots, but sure, why not? It does look like fun. Try not to fall off. 
Now, instead of doing this time trial, we're just gonna warp back to Barnacle Boy real quick to give him his power crystals and see a demonstration of his new superpower. Barnacle Boy, I think I found all your crystals. Now I can see your secret superpower. All right, stand back. <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> there. What happened? I gained the power to trim my nose hairs at super speed. Incredible. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, 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 I guess so. Uh, well then, uh, I need to return to the Mermelair and get back to work. <laughs> but uh, here, take this golden spatula and go away. Of course, Barnacle Boy. I'm always happy to lend my services to my favorite superhero. If you ever run into trouble again, let me know. Yeah, sure, kid. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and goodbye. You want to see me run to that mountain and back? You want to see me do it again? Anyway, let's uh, grab this uh, golden spatula here and return to Marmite Man to hear the dialogue that happens if you fail the time trial for the Kelp Vine Slide, which I'm sure plenty of people who've played this game have heard this dialogue many, many times, or at least the tail end of it. Keep trying. Still haven't beaten my record yet. Perseverance is the key. But you're the greatest superhero that ever lived. How could I, a simple sponge, topple your record? Keep trying, youngster! Keep trying! All right, well, we'll accept. The Kelp Vine Slide is generally considered to be the hardest slide in the game. It is very narrow, you're going down it very fast, and you have a very tight time limit to beat. Fortunately, I happen to know a time cut that will allow us to beat it more or less guaranteed. I screwed up the jump there because I was pretty sure I would the first time, but if we make that jump, then almost regardless of how fast we go for the rest of the slide, this will allow us to beat it, no trouble at all. Now, the important thing about the Kelp Vine Slide is that you need to know that if you hold back on the analog stick, you will uh, be able to slow down and make turns a lot better. There, we cleared the jump. Now, clearing that jump basically has you set. At this point, it's just a matter of staying on the slide. That is such a huge time cut for this that uh, as long as I do this properly, we should clear it with about 20 seconds to spare. You do have some uh, bouncing leaves to have to make jumps onto, and... Uh, the platforming on the vine slide, not exactly the tightest at all times, so it can be a little bit tricky. Heading over this way, uh, there was a sock on the alternate path there, but we're going to save that until after we complete the time trial, where, where we don't have to stress as much about it. So let's just keep going along this. As you can see, the turns do get pretty tight at this point, and this is where you really want to make sure you're uh, managing your speed properly, or else you will fly off the slide. Alright, and now that we've made it here, just keep going, make the turns nice and clean. As you can see, we are at the end of the slide. Only took me two tries to get it, and the only reason I had to retry it is because I failed the uh, shortcut the first time around. We cleared the time trial, get a golden spatula for making it through the slide, and now we get a... Well, now, that's some time you've gotten. I guess you could say I had that course licked. I guess I owe you a reward. Take this golden spatula. Thanks, Mermaid Man. I had to fail that slide many, many, many times in order to uh, get good enough to do that shortcut consistently. Now that we uh, don't have to stress about beating a time limit anymore, we can go for the sock on this. So, once again, just because it's faster, I'm going to go for the shortcut jump in order to get to the area with the sock faster. You want to slow down as you're making it here. Ah, screwed it up a little bit. Alright, here we are on the slide again. Getting the sock is just a matter of taking a separate path from uh, where we uh, took originally to complete the slide. Thankfully, it is right by the checkpoint, so once you uh, made it there... Oh my goodness. As I was saying, once we make it to the checkpoint, we'll be able to retry very easily if we happen to fall, which, as you have seen from uh, these reattempts after I've cleared the time trial, is a very real possibility coming from me. Uh, what we want to do is we want to take this bounce leaf to the left instead of the one to the right. This will allow us to take another bounce leaf right over here. Ah, missed it. But, like I said, right by the checkpoint, so if we happen to fall, and this is exactly the reason why I want to wait until after the time trial to try and go for this, uh, we are just right by the leaves to bounce on, so we can try again nice and quick. Ooh, uh-oh. 
Yeah, sometimes uh, landing those bounces can be a little bit tricky. I've been having to make a lot of cuts in this video, uh, sections that I frankly did not expect. Of course, I'm so used to doing the second section of the level uh, in the sequence broken fashion, I actually forgot the correct method for uh, getting the uh, second stone tiki to where it needs to go. Here is the sock. Now that we've collected that, we can just teleport back to Mrs. Puff to turn in the lost campers. Bob, there you are. Thanks to you, all the campers have safely returned. No problem, Mrs. Puff. Any self-respecting sponge would gladly help. And it was actually fun exploring the kelp forest. You're not so bad when you aren't behind a wheel, SpongeBob. Thanks again. Always glad to lend a hand, Mrs. Puff. I found this golden spatula the other day. Why don't you take it? You definitely earned it. Wow, Mrs. Puff, I'll cherish it always. I'm not sure why the camera was doing that, but we've got our golden spatula. That is not the end of the video, though, because, of course, we've got one last bit of money farming to get the final golden spatula from Mr. Krabs. Thankfully, I don't really feel like we have to do too much, so we should have that money really quick. Be right back. Alright, that should be enough money to buy one last spatula from Mr. Krabs, and uh, as long as I keep up on destroying robots, not Patrick, we need to go to Mr. Krabs, uh, as long as I keep up on destroying robots and breaking the tiki's we come across, we should also have enough shiny objects for every uh, cash gate left in the game. So, do you want to trade shiny objects for a golden spatula? That's quality craftsmanship, that is. Come again. Alright, with that taken care of, we have finished the kelp forest, we have gotten all of Mr. Krabs' golden spatulas, we are primed and ready to get the last golden spatula from Patrick, though unfortunately that will take two more levels for us to get, and when we return, we will come in to a level that I prefer greatly to the kelp forest, the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard. Yeah, this uh, video ended up having a lot of cuts, the raw file is uh, 47 minutes and 50 seconds right now brutal. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, until then, though, boy, goodbye.